Okay. In this, uh, again, hour and something, we will try to build a first step of our task of our server for the to-do list application that you are developing in the lab since uh, the beginning of the course, before in Telegram, then now as our web application and so on. So now we can, we try to put it as a REST server that provide content, not only to as a web page, but also to other application. So the goal is understand how to design our service and design for real our service together, that is the, the most difficult part since you don't speak. Uh, then we'll start to implement our service in Python with Flask. And we build upon the previous lab. And so we, we build a REST server for managing a task. We will perform two or three operations of this server. And then the remaining operation, probably you will ask to complete the remaining operation in the lab on Monday. So we, want, we would like to have a basic, a basic server that connect to database that contains a series of tasks, like the, the application you realized last uh, Monday, two Mondays ago. For each task, uh, provides two information. And this is a little bit different from the, the version you, you realized. But the first information are the task description. And the other is a priority. Is the task urgent or not? Zero or one. And can show a single task and all the existing tasks and can create a new task, basically. So the idea is that we have the HTTP server connected to a database. Then instead of providing direct ring, uh, HTML pages, provide JSON file. So that you maybe have here a desktop application, a terminal that asks this and take this JSON to do something, a mobile application that can take the same JSON and do something, or another website, a web page, that instead of taking the HTML, takes the JSON representation and build, we can say, extract from the JSON the information that is needed to represent the HTML. So the list of the task with their description and urgent or not. So first of all, let's start. You should have, in the lab, two months ago, you have realized this. This is the solution that is published on GitHub. Uh, now, a uh, curiosity, uh, one thing. If I run, if I press run, it start, and then if I refresh this, it give me an error. So if this happen, it's not a, a, an error in the code, is that it is not able to open the database file. Because PyCharm, um, even if the database is here and is correctly linked from the, the code, PyCharm is not able to open this. You need to tell PyCharm that the working directory the directory in which there is the database, the database is present, is this one. So we can do this here in edit configuration. In this working directory, you have to select the project, the folder that contains your project. If you press OK and then OK again, and you run from here or from here up to forever, it should work. So this is the solution of the, of the lab of two months ago, where you have a list of, uh, of tasks, a delete button, and you can enter a new task without style, without anything, two months ago. This is the solution on GitHub, okay? So starting from this, we try to delete the HTML part, we can say, and replace with uh, uh, the JSON representation arrest call for the, what we need. And, and what we need? We need to design, so I open this. 
we need to design our REST API. So the goal here is design uh, the task REST API. Hmm? So first of all, we need to identify which or what is the resource that we want to represent. And so the first question is, what is the resource in our application? The resource that go in the collection. Task, yeah. We only have one resource now that is task. If it was a more complex web application, maybe we have task and we have also users. We have multiple resources, but now we designed the API for one resource. Then if we have another resource, we have another series of API that pertain to that uh, resource. And the collection, it's easy. Or we, call, we can call the collection of that resource. Tasks. We can, yeah, okay. So we need uh, to perform uh, five, four, four operation. The first one is uh, getting all the task, right? The rest, getting all the task, getting uh, a single task, then create a single task, a new task, and maybe also delete an existing task. Then we can also have update an existing task, but for now, let's concentrate on this. Otherwise, we need more than one hour to do everything. So getting all the tasks. URL and uh, method. URL, we are building a REST server for task. We are the resource that is task, the collection that is called tasks. And uh, and uh, we need a URL and a method. The URL will be something HTTP our server dot com slash tasks. Before tasks, it's a good practice to add at least version 1.0 because this is the first version of our um, our server. And again, since we are uh, serving the HTML, the website, and the JSON, the REST server, from the same host, maybe we can also have API. So that here, maybe we can also have index.html, as is not here under API, for example. And the method for getting all the task is The method, to, the HTTP method to get all the task is not you, is get. So if you needed to write a documentation for a task or rest, uh, rest server, rest API, you typically do this. Well, maybe yes, you don't write collections, yes. But everything else, yes. Maybe also resource, you can skip. But everything else, yes. So a title that describes what is your operation. Maybe also two or three lines to better describe the title. So here is getting all the tasks. It's quite simple. But maybe you can also write here a description, a longer description that is uh, this request to get all the tasks from the server in uh, alphabetical order, no order, and so on. And we'll accept a and we'll response, res we reply with uh, uh, JSON content, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Brief description of what your um, API did. Hmm? So 
Here it's a get. We have a body in the request with a get. Do we have a body in the, re in the request with a get? No. Yes. In a get, in a re get request, do you have a body? No. In the response, yes. So here we can, for example, try to write an example response of the body, not the HTML, HTTP. So, so the example response will reply to API slash version 1.0 slash tasks that now is the same address here because it's generic, but this is an example. Always remind that this is an example. So I exemplify. I will perform a get here and the response will be a JSON. We'll, let's try to build a response. So let's start with an object and let's start by adding a key that is because in, a, in an object you have always an object you must always start with a key and you have tasks and these tasks contains this time an array, right? An array of what? In JSON. Now, what, what the type here? The, yeah, an object, a collection, because our task is uh, uh, composed of different uh, element. We have a description, we have uh, an ID, because this is the collection of all tasks. And I told you we have also a urgent, not urgent um, variable. So we have three information in this list. So for example, we have, we can call it ID, ID, and we can call it one, for example, and uh, then uh, description, and this is a task, and uh, then we call it urgent, and we can say, for example, zero, hmm? zero, not urgent, one, Then this is an example. So we need uh, um, to provide an example. So maybe we can copy and paste this and change uh, the ID uh, or put 25. This is another task and urgent now is one, for example. And then comma and something else. An example, not complete, but a portion of the example, okay? So and we design our first uh, API. Getting all the tasks, this is URL, the method is get, the example response to this call is this one. Okay? Yes, no? Yes. Then, next, create a single task. Getting a, a single task, sorry. Getting a single task. Like before, URL, method, URL. Like before, how we start. In, in, in an example that I will put here, let, let me start to create an example, example. I will put in the example 
what she said, that is API uh, five, okay? Here is not an example, so we need to identify in some way that this is, uh, an, we need an ID, and this ID is by our choice an integer, maybe. So at least uh, we, need, we can write something like this. A placeholder to say here goes an ID. Then we can put here, I don't know, int to points, or we can put uh, here in the, the description the um, this uh, API uh, ask for a task ID an integer number and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, hmm? and so on. Describe what this does. Or here we can put uh, ID is uh, a number starting from one. We can describe in several ways that this is ID is a number or a string or something else. Hmm? so that everyone that reads our documentation is able to put the right information here. And the method, let me delete this, the method is get. We need an example request? No. We need a, a response? It's a get, we need a response. Yeah, we need the response, uh, it's not really the same uh, because we don't have, we don't have um, uh, an array, but yes, it's similar to the previous one, so you can, for example, copy here this one and then remove, uh, so task one will be something like uh, this. So we have a key and here the task. You can also have this part. You can skip the starting um, key, the starting name, this task. Often is present to make a, a parallel with the previous API so that a developer always expect a collection, an object, that start with something, always, in every response. So it skip, we can say, get directly the first value and go here. In this case, and also in this case. Get immediately the first value. If here we have, uh, um, we start here, and here we start, uh, instead here we have the developer should realize two different uh, procedures to get information. Mm -hmm. One for getting the value of the first key, and one instead getting all the content of the only object the, it, it has. Mm -hmm. First. Second is uh, a good practice, especially here in the list, to start with a textual representation of what is your resource. Because here we have only have tasks, but you can also have users. So it's real, it's, it's true that the, the get happens for tasks. But it's also true that an application may ask for task and the user and receive a users and tasks. So to have this uh, information inside the response could be useful. Hmm? And this is getting a single task. Perfect. Then, um, create a new task. As before, URL, URL and method. To create a new task, our URL will be
rest get a list of tasks get on the collection get a single task get on the identifier inside the collection create a new task not get and the url is the the collection or the single resource we don't have anything else yeah someone no someone something someone else told uh, it's not the single razor so it's <laughs> the collection that is uh, yeah tasks uh, not in this way hmm? and the method is uh, post hmm? why the collection because we create uh, with post a new item of that collection an item that does not exist so here we cannot put uh, five because it doesn't it not exist we don't have anything to put here because the task does not exist when we call this api hmm? okay um we have uh, do we have an example request here? A request? Do we have a request here? This is a post. Do we have a request? Body? Yes. And do we have a response? No. OK. The request, for example, it uh, will be post, uh, similar to the first uh, get, uh, not version number 10, is tasks. And uh, what we write here, we are creating a new task. So which information we have to provide to the, the web application to create a new task. Two things, only two things. The ID, no. The description, yes. Yeah, the description that is uh, a new task. And the Urgent, uh, yes. N we don't provide the ID. Why? Why do we don't provide the ID? Because? Because it's the server that will uh, take this description and say, okay, I don't know, I have to store this in a database uh, and the last ID is 30. And so this is the 31. For example, we need to store in some other place, so I will give an ID linked to the username of the user, the date, the time. We don't know, it's the server, it's the responsibility of the server. This is something that a developer should take and say, okay, I would like to realize a Android application to create a to-do list. This is a server that someone provides me to realize this function. How can I get all the tasks I created, create a new task in this way? I do care if the server uses a database or something else. No, because I'm creating a mobile application. The server is already done, created, working, hopefully. Okay. And and we don't need an example response. Delete. This is this should be the easiest. Let's start from the method. The method to delete an existing task is delete. And the URL is D 
URL to delete an existing task with a specific ID is API version one tasks the ID, like before. And like before, you can specify if the ID is an integer, a string, whatever. We have a example request, a body of the request. <laughs> Maybe it's not acceptable as a reply. A delete as a request, a request in the body. There is something that we need to pass to the server, accept this information to delete the task. No, in fact, the delete has not any request in the body, neither response body. So the API stop here. We have no example. Maybe we can say that uh, if uh, the, the task exists, a uh, 200, okay, status message will be provided, otherwise a uh, 404 not found, for example, will be provided if the task is not, does not exist. But we don't need to pass anything or receive anything. And let's, let's create also the other one. What is the other one? Get a list, get a single, create, delete, Update, yeah. I, I don't create, a delete an entire collection of tasks or update an entire collection of tasks. Hmm? Only delete single and update single. Update an existing task. The URL and the method. The method is Put, then you will receive a, a price for the continuous response. Um, and the URL is some, some, someone else, please. Version 1.0, update an existing task. The URL is Thanks. is tasks ID like this. So I can copy and paste here. In this case, do we have a example request? We need to pass something to the server to update our existing task. Yes. And we have uh, an example response. No. Okay. And the example request is, for example, This one. Maybe the description is uh, update uh, the task. That's true. So a JSON that is a collection, uh, that is an object with a key description and a new description uh, urgent with uh, one because we don't want to update that one. Notice that here I make a choice that is the update, update the entire resource. I don't want, if I receive something like this, I can first give an error because this is not the entire task or I can accept also this. Now it's more we say restful and conservative Say if I receive this one, I give an error because the put operation is total for the resource. 
So the put update the entire resource, not a portion, by definition. So I will accept only this one, an entire task to be updated, an existing task. Here we have to say put uh, API version 1.0 tasks uh, one, for example. Okay. Then I will put also these on, on the website this evening or tomorrow, better tomorrow, so that you can also have this, this description here. Okay, now we have created our API. So we can start realizing our server in Flask, in Python. In our server, we will create this for now, getting all the task, getting a single task, and create a new task. We, for now, skip delete and update hmm, for time purpose. Then the mechanism is always the same. To do this, I created, starting from the lab five, the last lab, I created another project, this one, that has few differences. The first difference is in the database, that is the presence of this urgent column in the database. Let's see if I can open. Here, you, you, we have a task ID, like before, a to-do that is a description, and this urgent that is the, the new column. So if we open this, you see that this is exactly the same. It is the same structure you have for, for the lab, identical, the same database with this column that is all zero for now. And the other difference is that I put the database in a folder that is called the DB, just to avoid having everything here. Since this is a database, it can stay separately. Then I have some, I wrote here some example for you, task. This is the JSON for adding a new task in a proper way. You see there is a description, this is the urgent, and so on. And this is instead a wrong task for the creation, because there is no urgent. We cannot create a task without urgent. Because a task is composed by an ID that is provided by the server, a description, and urgent, yes, no. So this is wrong because it's missing urgent. So if I give my, this to my server, the server should reply error and not add this in the database. And I also add here some instruction, if you want, to, um, you can start the, the, the web server that we developed today, and we copy one line at a time in a, in a terminal with a C curl, and uh, um, this send first time the new task, and notice that he set the header, hmm? content type application JSON in the request, because we are going to provide JSON, not HTML, not anything else. And this is the second request, is identical, except the wrong task. Hmm? It gives the wrong task, so it must generate error here. So if you want, these are two separate lines to test the web server. Because now the server will not provide an HTML page to test. It will provide a JSON page. So this is one way to test from command line the, the server that we will develop. 
or you can create a, a Python application with JSON load and JSON dumps. But in addition, I also created something that you don't know for now. That is our page, a non page of the, the and this is, you know, uh, a non page for this that as an index, only an index, that by using Ajax and JavaScript and jQuery, ask for the JSON, process the JSON, extract the information on the JSON, and will print on screen this information. So, for example, this is basically the web application here, when the, web ser the, server, the REST server will work, will appear every task, here the, the urgency, here you can type a new task, can put if it's urgent or not, and enter to submit the task. This is only one page with some JavaScript behind to perform post and get. But just to, to see more easily than cool that it, it work hopefully at, uh, in half an hour. Okay? So let's close this. So here, another thing that I changed from the, the lab file is this file. I renamed some function, removing db from the name, just so, and I um, removed from the get tasks the sorted the sorted portion, because we need the task in any order, no particular order, and they create a get task, get single task, that is a subset, we can say, to the previous method. And remove task is, was again uh, similar. This is 90% the same file that you already have in lab five, uh, in the solution of lab five. And the task server.py instead is almost empty. Here, define, as you already know, the home page, the HTML home page, that one that I show you. Here, we need to insert our function for the REST server, and here is for starting Flask. Okay, so let me, this is the, the same file I created in Word, just to create the same thing with the same name. So first of all, let's delete this comment. We need to create a three function, right? Get all, get single, create new task. Three function. Let's start defining this function. The first one we can call get tasks. Hmm? And return, um, for example. The second one is uh, get uh, task. And we some way need to pass uh, an ID here of the task, and again, rate or nothing. And the third one is uh, um, insert, create, insert task, and again, return. I don't put here return zero, because now I will, we will add the, the curators here, and Flask is not able to uh, say that integer is not a valid uh, value to render in our page, if we look in the, in the browser, while the string, yes. So I put the, the double quotes for this reason. So we need to add the curators here. I thought decorators, this is a decorator, okay? I don't know how, how, you, how, how do you call it? 
something before the definition of a function. The, the decorators um, that start with at, and uh, it's uh, like before, app, app dot, um, dot root, and we here need to define our root. And what is uh, our root? Is uh, API slash version 1.0. This is for getting all the tasks. So tasks we, we created before. So we need to take this, that URL and put here. And if we want, we can also say that the methods is, uh, in this case, there is only one method that is get. So that, uh, when I receive a get to this address, I will execute this function. If I receive a post to this address, I not execute this function because the method supported uh, is only get. Hmm? And we can do the same thing here and here. So let's start from the last one because it's easier. The last one remains identical. The only thing that change is that instead of get, I will have, we will have post because it's to create a new task. But the address is the same. This one changes a little bit. Do you agree? What is missing here? Yes. ID. Thanks. The ID. And I will put here the ID. Do you know? I will put here something that is a variable. So we cannot put here one because when I call two, it's different. It's another URL. So we need to put it a variable, something that identify that is a generic ID. Hmm? And in Flask, like in our example documentation, is written in this uh, uh, way. Hmm? Minor something greater than symbol. And this task ID is the same thing that will go here. So we can, if we call it here ID, here we need to put ID. Otherwise we cannot take this number, in our case, and use here inside the function. Okay, we need, in this way, however, this task ID will get everything, an integer, a string, everything you can type on the, the URL. We want uh, an integer. We only want an integer. We don't want uh, uh, API version one task slash trial. We want a number. So we can enforce this uh, and say that these methods, this function, will be called with the get method, with this address, but only when this task ID is a number. And to do this, we can say int, colon, the variable. That is, this specific variable must be of this type. So that here, in, this, in the body of this function, I can consider it for sure as an integer, not as a string. And this is an integer for sure, because in the database is the primary key, it is the ID, it is a number. Okay. Let's try if this do something at least. So for example, if I go here, I should not receive any error. Hopefully. Yeah. I receive nothing because I return nothing, but it's not an error. Great. So let's Let's start to fill this function. 
what we need to do here. We have our task in the database. So first of all, we need to get the task list from the database, right? This is the function to provide the list of, of every task. So first of all, we need to take the list from the database. Then at a certain point, we need to return the tasks instead of this empty string. So how we get the task, the task list from the database? We have this database, uh, the database uh, interaction module. So we can say, for example, task, uh, task list equal db interaction punto dot get tasks. So I take all the tasks from the database and they put here in this task list. So I can return task list. I need, however, task list as a JSON. And particularly, I would like to have this, a JSON structured in this way. That start with um, these parentheses, tasks, an array, and every task here in this specific way. So, Flask provides a function that is called JSONify that perform an operation similar to the JSON dump that I showed you before. JSON support. And now I don't see, uh, it's here. JSONify. This function wraps, dumps, uh, and so on and so on. And it turns the JSON output into a response object that is what we want because we want that this the body, the JSON in the body of a response, an HTTP response. So it's, it's, gr it's great with the application JSON MIME type set. That is exactly what we want, exactly what everyone that deal with JSON wants from a web application. So it wraps dumps, the same dumps, uh, similar dumps to the one that I showed you before, and provide a response with the JSON. So let's try to use this. So here, JSONify, task list. And let's see what happens. Here, the address is this one. Okay, we have some content. It is not what we want, but better than nothing, we can say. So first of all, we have a series of array here, and also here, and we don't want. We, this is maybe can remain there because it's an array of tasks. This, we would like a collection, an object. Then here, we, we need ID, description, urgent, then the comma here is right, but we need to add something. And we need also the tasks at the beginning, the tasks key at the beginning. And then, but the content is here. So first of all, easy thing, let's add the tasks at the beginning hmm? in this way. Let's write directly this one. Um, tasks hmm? so 
I add the tasks. Why I don't put uh, double quotes in any type because JSONify perform the same operation of dump. Take uh, Python objects and give you JSON strings. So a Python dictionary key value is converted in a JSON object. So in this way, if we refresh, okay, it's better. This is right, this is right, this is right, this is wrong. But we need to edit every single task. Why we have these parentheses here? Because the database, if you look at, at the code that you already developed, um, return a tuple. It, not, it does not not return a dictionary with keys and values. It returns a tuple with the content of each column. This is the content of the first column, this is the content of the second, this is the content of the third. So, and a tuple automatically is converted in JSON in the thing that is much more similar, that is an array. It's not an array in Python, it's not a list in Python, but it's much more similar to a list than a dictionary. So it's converted in a list. So we need to take every single task that comes from the database and add the information that is missing. And we cannot do this, uh, it's better not to do this inside this DB interaction module, because the DB interaction module has the, the goal to interact with the database, not to format data for JSON. Because the, the database is, should be agnostic toward the application. So here we want JSON. If we want XML, the database could not give us a JSON representation. So we need to do this here. So let's do this. First of all, we need a um, support variable, we can say. The, uh, in it, then we can call task. So this task uh, is uh, uh, an array hmm? that store the single tasks in an array. Then here. We need to get the task like before, but before giving to the JSONify function, we need to perform some operation. That is add ID equal the number, description equal the, the, the description, uh, urgent equal the number hmm? in a dictionary so that it can be converted properly in JSON. So to do this, we can do this with a for, for example, for item in task list, um, we, we need to here prepare the JSON format and then we can do tasks, that is the array dot append task that is the, for example, variable that we create here. So here in this line, we prepare the JSON format. This task will be a dictionary. So here we append some mini dictionary inside the, the list. That is exactly what we want. So now, here, let me create here a function to do this preparation because probably we need also the same operation here for getting a single task and stop. So we need to, to redo this same thing. So let me create a, a separate function that we can call prepare uh, for JSON, something like that. This prepare for JSON take a um, item and return something in this case. So here we can call this function and give item. So we take this item, this is a tuple, we fill it with information, we put it in a dictionary, 
and so on, and we return the new, the JSONified version to, the ta to this variable, and we add a single variable. So So here we need to <coughs> convert the task from a tuple in a dictionary um, for uh, using the JSON uh, creation. Mm? And then we need also to add uh, the additional uh, information like the key in the dictionary. So here we can, first of all, create the variable that we will return, that we can call task, as a dictionary. So here we can return task. Okay? Then, task, we have a single task, so we need the three key, ID, description, and urgent. So task ID equal something. And now if I fill up. Task, I, task description equal something else, and task urgent. That are the same thing that I put here, identical. So here, we need from item, from the tuple that is contained in item, get uh, respectively the first, the second, and the third value of the tuple. So we need to write item of which number? Zero item of one and two. So we created a dictionary in this way. This is the key, this is the value, this is the key, this is the value, this is the key, this is the value, and return the single dictionary. So for each task as a tuple, we create the corresponding dictionary and return the dictionary. Here, we have a dictionary and we append the dictionary to the task list. Because we want a list that contains JSON objects that are in Python dictionaries. So let's save this. And here, I need to provide tasks now. Because task list is this one. So let's try this. OK. We got what, what we want. The first object in a JSON with an array that stops here, perfect, and inside every single task in description ID urgent. Notice, uh, notice that different from before, what, what do you notice different from before? There is something different except the formatting stuff. Before we had the ID, the description, and urgent, always in the same position. Now, no. We have the description. If we restart the server, maybe the description is not the first one because the dictionary is not ordered. So the value are represented, the couple, the pairs are represented here in no specific order. Okay, so now it should be easy, but since they are key, you can also always get the right key. Now it should be easy to create uh, the, um, the second 
get to the single task because here we need to uh, create a variable that is task uh, from db interaction get uh, task task id is the same that we get from the url in this point if uh, we need to check if task exists if, if we have six tasks and the url we type 20 we need to check if it's, it's 20 is uh, it's all right, so if task exists, there is something in this task. Uh, if this task is, does not exist, for example, I can say abort with the status code 404. Hmm? Otherwise, I can return, like before, JSONify, um, task that is the same thing I wrote uh, we wrote in the document task uh, prepare for JSON task hmm. so let's check if this work so for sure we have task number one right task with the description of the origin if we write task number 100 not found because abort 404 that is not found. Okay? The last one, insert task. So here we need uh, to perform another operation before ask, performing any operation to the database that is getting the body from the request because it's there the content of the task that we need to insert. So to do this in, um, in Flask, we have a request object. Every of this function, when post is available, for example, every this function, I put something with this decorator as a request object. This request object contains the headers, the body, and so on. And this request object has a special method that is JSON to take the content in the JSON format if the content, if the body of the request is JSON. Otherwise, we'll give you error. But in this case, we are quite sure that the request will be JSON. So we can, we want this request to, get, to be JSON. So we, we take, take the JSON the representation from the request. So we can then put this, uh, this, uh, the, this content in a variable that we call add the request, for example, because this is the, the JSON that comes from, from the, the user, the client application. And now we need to check if a task is present here, is not an empty JSON, for example, if description is present and if urgent is present, because we need all these three conditions to be true. So if, let's open a parenthesis, if add request is not none, it exists, and description is in add request because this is the json representation in python so this is a dictionary or, or at least a, this, this should be a dictionary so this is this should be a key in the dictionary queen so this is should be true and the last one urgent in add request if these three conditions are true, we can get the text from the, the representation. So add the request dot um, description. That is the value associated to the description key. And urgent add the request of urgent 
Hmm? So we extract the value from the description, the value from urgent, and we can add these in the database. So db interaction dot insert task, um, and this accept two parameters. The first one is the text, the second one is urgent, and we have two variables. That is one text and the other urgent. That are these two here. Then we can, we need to return something here. So we can return, I would like to return 200, okay, 201 created maybe. So, quindi I can say response, that is another object to give a response in the status code. Response with a code, that is status, of 201, for example, created. Otherwise, outside this if, I can return, like before, before an error, like 403. That is not created, if I, not, if I properly remember. Hmm? So, we take the JSON representation in Python format from the request. We check if the property that we need, the urgent and description are there, if the request exists, we extract the values, and then we insert the task in the database with the same method, that the same function that you already have, and if everything goes well, we respond with 201 created, otherwise we give an error, a message error. So if now, if you are lucky, maybe the, so since here I cannot create a post in the browser, the web application here should work, yeah. So this web application get all the tasks from the JSON representation. Before they are not, they were not here, now they are, with zero, because um, in the database, everything was zero. So let's try to insert a new task. That is, uh, this is a new task. It is time to go. And this urgent, and you see here, it's time to go, it has been inserted. This enter perform this post call with uh, insert the content of this uh, input box uh, in, uh, as a description, and this checkbox uh, one or zero, if it's checked or not, and the enter from the post to our server here, and you also see what happens in the log. You see that the first, this one, is our post. Post to API version one task, because this is a server, the protocol is HTTP 1.1, and the response code is 201, that is exactly this response code. If we want to try with curl to add, for example, a, a task that is not urgent, you should have a 403, okay? So I will put this code on uh, GitHub and linked on the website. I will remind you that on Monday, the lecture, again, the, the lecture is in room 1i, 